Tisha B'Av is the saddest day on the Jewish calendar. It's our national day of mourning, the day on which we mourn the destruction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem and all of the terrible tragedies and calamities throughout Jewish history. But it's also a day of hope. The Gemara Masachet Ta'anit relates that it's a day which is set aside for weeping for all generations. Yet according to the Talmud Yerushalmi, it's the symbolic birthday of the Mashiach. In the book of Eicha, Tisha B'Av is referred to as a moed, an appointed time. In this context, it means a day designated for punishment, but it's a double entendre, a double meaning, because a moed can also refer to a happy day, a festival. And indeed, as the prophet Zechariah foretold, one day Tisha B'Av will be transformed into a festival. Rav Yosef Dov, Alevi Soloveitchik, noted this duality, this dialectic, in the laws and customs of the day itself. As the day wanes, some of the restrictions are eased. Towards the end of the day, we can sit on chairs at Mincha, we turn the lights on in the synagogue, we return the parochet, the curtain, to the ark, we put on our talit and tefillin, and we say the tefillah of Nachim, asking for consolation. The mood turns towards one of hope. And yet, the Gemara in Masachet Ta'anit relates that it was precisely then when the temple was burning, towards the end of the day, as evening approached, and it continued to burn the entire tenth of Av. It's counterintuitive. The customs of mourning ease up and the tone of the day shifts precisely as the Beit HaMikdash was up in flames. Why? Rosalovitchik pointed to a powerful passage in the Midrash Echa Rabbah, which describes how Hashem took out his anger on etzim va'avanim, on wood and stone, destroying the physical edifice, the physical structure of the Holy Temple, but not the Jewish people. The knowledge and understanding that the Jewish nation would go on, that our flame would not be extinguished, that Hashem had not forgotten his covenant with his people, that provided us with hope and consolation and continues to sustain us. Rosalovitchik also taught that by the very fact that the Temple Mount retains its kedusha, its sanctity, its holiness, we see that Hashem still maintains his deep connection, his deep bond with his beloved Israel. Each and every prophecy of destruction, of doom and gloom in our Tanakh ends with words of redemption, with words of hope and consolation. The Gemara in Masachet Yoma relates that when the Babylonians entered into the Holy Temple, entered into the sanctuary, they found the Kruvim, the cherubs, entangled in an embrace. But elsewhere, the Gemara relates that, yes, when the Jewish people obeyed the will of God, the Kruvim faced one another. But when the people of Israel failed to fulfill the will of God, the Kruvim would, would turn away from one another. And yet, when the Holy Temple was being destroyed, the Babylonians found the Kruvim entangled in an embrace. Why? What does that mean? I think the answer is so simple. It's so profound and so relevant. Despite all the destruction and devastation taking place all around, Hashem was expressing His love for His people. It was a sign of hope. Following the miraculous birth of the State of Israel in 1948 and the miraculous and dramatic reclamation of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount in 1967, many discussed and debated the relevance of Tisha B'Av today in a world where the Jewish people have returned home in a world with the Jewish state, in light of Jewish sovereignty over Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. But on October 7th, everything changed. On that cursed day, and in the days and weeks and months that followed, we were witness to so much pain, so much destruction, so much devastation, so much chorban. Those who in the past perhaps felt ambivalent about Tisha B'Av, those who debated its relevance, or significance, all of a sudden realize just how relevant Tisha B'Av is today. With a war still being waged in Gaza, with threats from Hezbollah, Iran, and our enemies around the world, there's a sense of vulnerability. Jews in communities and on campuses around the world are being targeted for the mere crime of being Jewish. On October 7th, all of our illusions were shattered. 
our feeling of safety and security gone? What's left? Hope. In one word, hope. Tisha B'Av may be the saddest day on the Jewish calendar, but it's also a day of hope. We place our hope and our trust in Hashem. We hope and trust in His promise of redemption. May we merit to see the Geula Shlema, the final redemption, speedily in our days. Amen.